These conversations were recorded in the summer of 2020. We wanted to put artists who'd met through Green Man back in touch as we all try and navigate the fallout of the COVID-19 global pandemic. The results were so good that we couldn't not share them with you too. We hope they give an insight into how artists think, their experiences at Green Man, and what they talk about behind closed doors. Uh, hello, my name is David Ogle. I'm an artist based in Liverpool. Um, the work behind me on the, the screen here is the work I showed at uh, Green Man Festival in 2017 uh, called Lumen. Um, it's a sort of installation of these glowing kind of tree-like structures. Uh, this was behind the walled garden area on the site uh, on the way to the main stage. We're caught with drawing and um, uh, mostly kind of site-based installation work. Uh, I like to uh, uh, present work outdoors and produce things that are kind of responsive to the environments that uh, that they're shown in and hopefully try to encourage people to explore those environments in, in different ways. Hi, I'm Callum McCutcheon. Uh, I'm an artist from Llangadog, uh, based in Bristol at the moment. Uh, I'm a mixed media artist and interested in our kind of the psychological relationship we have with sound, uh, currently making work uh, in line with sort of mental health and well-being. Uh, in 2017, was commissioned by Green Man to make an installation, uh, which was called Wedge, uh, and it was situated opposite the walled garden, uh, around the corner from the courtyard bar, and it was an audiovisual piece. Okay, so so I just talked through some of some of these then. This was a uh, a show of new site specific work, uh, thinking about the particular elements of this location and encouraging people to to um, explore the space in uh, in new ways. Uh, the way I approached it was thinking about using light as something that would enable that kind of exploration of this otherwise completely pitch black environment and that kind of approach. Uh, it's something that I've carried through in a lot of subsequent work, including the um, piece for, for Green Man. So this, this piece on the screen, um, using sort of very thin nylon fishing line and ultraviolet light to create these kind of glowing prism forms moving through the space. Um, I wanted to use as many elements of this environment as possible, things like the water on the floor, um, reflecting the, the sphere um, and the sort of shadow of it mapping out the arc of the ceiling. Um, and um, yeah, uh, pieces like this, I've done a number of, of works of this kind, and they're all kind of uh, derived from drawings initially, trying to take elements of a drawing and, and translate them somehow into a, a 3D work that you have a, a different relationship with than you would a piece on paper. Um, if we move on to the next image. Um, so again, with a, a relationship to drawing, uh, this is a, a part of a, a series of works. This one was in North Wales at uh, Morfamo. Um, so this was mapping out the, um, the way that people move through the landscape, uh, the kind of paths that get worn into the, the hillside over time. Um, I picked this out with uh, thousands of, of individual LEDs and created this kind of sculptural form striking through the landscape that emerged after dark as the, um, the lights came up. Um, so again, sort of thinking about revealing elements of space that may otherwise go unnoticed um, and thinking about how people kind of naturally move through the landscape. It shows something about our, our natural inclinations in encountering these sort of spaces that um, the, the kinds of path that gets worn in by many people uh, over time. Uh, so again, yeah, that was part of a kind of ongoing series of playing with uh, sculpture with, with a kind of drawing feel to it. Uh, the, the next piece um, on the slides here, um, after a kind of a series of works that I've been doing, like the previous one, uh, of working with the landscape, um, I then wanted to sort of go back and reintroduce some of these elements of these natural environments into um, uh, 
kind of more sort of indoor installation works. Um, so this was a piece tr trying to recreate a particular landscape and stripping it down down to its fundamental elements. Um, this was in some ways more of a kind of performance work. Um, we had jets of this smoke coming into the space every every minute or so and it was really about how this smoke illuminated by the sphere at the back sort of coiled around these trees and um, moved through the environment. So the, so the space was constantly changing and I wanted to, to recreate that kind of element of the the dynamism of a, of a natural landscape that these things are constantly in in motion um, it's, uh, it's difficult to see from from this particular image but this was in a, like a big uh, kind of locker inside a warehouse this was a, a uh, the Chongju craft biennial in uh, South Korea uh, and so you'd look into this space and it would it seemed to sort of go on endlessly it's so dark in there you couldn't see the back of the space from standing outside. And so it was almost like entering this sort of different world, was the sort of idea of approaching that particular piece. Um, the next one, um, now this is um, Lumen, as shown at uh, Green Man Festival. Now, as I was saying with the, um, the first image, it was all about uh, changing the way that someone might encounter a space. With this particular work, what I wanted to do was sort of create something that produced a space around itself, almost after dark, that this otherwise kind of darkened landscape, you have this little island of lights within it that people would be drawn towards and uh, almost the idea of creating sort of little communities out in this space, like bringing people to it. Uh, people are sort of naturally drawn towards the sort of light and colour um, after dark, and um, so the the piece was really about about that of changing someone's relationship to to the space and um, uh, making it something that you encountering that environment in in some new way. Um, the, the kind of topography of the the Green Man site was interesting in that in the way that. The other artworks were curated. We sort of walk through the, the woods and then come out the other side at, at this piece. And you could, you could sort of see it through the woods. So it would be sort of something in the distance that would be kind of drawing you towards it. And, um, yeah, shaping the way that someone would, would explore the site. Um, Okay, and this is um, the final image here. Um, so this is a recent series of drawings um, inspired by a, a project I did a couple of years ago in the sand dunes of the Sefton coast. Um, so this is taking um, elements that I was particularly drawn towards in, in that landscape um, of the these kind of spheres that are recurrent in my work, um, sort of, changed across the different drawings and the landscape changes. Uh, I wanted to get a sense of how that particular dune network is constantly shifting and moving around and this landscape is um, always um, in flux. Um, and these kind of spheres or circles representing kind of lights and space and air also sort of move around and change colour like suns and moons moving through the space. Um, and this was uh, also the basis of a a series of kind of hand-drawn animations combined with um, animation combined with real footage of landscapes that I'm that I'm currently working on. Uh, I think that's that's the end. I mean, uh, should I do a screen? Yeah. Usually, I work quite small scale, uh, using found or repurposed objects as materials mainly because they're cheap and accessible. Um, that process of playing with materials is really important to me. Uh, that's where I feel like I have a relationship or a dialogue with what I'm making, and that process is what forms the work to me. So making wage required a really different approach to what I'm used to, um, because it was the first large scale piece of work that had to be kind of built safely for people, for the public. 
um, I had to consider things which I really wouldn't normally consider my way can work. Um, things like the weather, it's going to be outdoors, um, health and safety, it's quite an important one. Uh, managing a team, working with a big budget, uh, it had to be transportable, uh, we had to build it on site, so everything had to be quite premeditated and planned, um, which I found difficult and quite stressful because it's really new to me and I'm there was no time to sort of tinker with it until it was actually being built. Um, so all of the kind of, everything existed in my head which made it all quite stressful because there wasn't much of a making process until the actual build, um, which is totally new to me when I'm, I'm more comfortable within that process rather than thinking about it, I suppose. So Wedge was a development from an existing piece of work uh, using some lights and a clothes horse, which was exploring um, some of the ways that sound can kind of affect our attention. The sound was created by a recording of a bike chain slowed down and then played out of individual speakers but played out of sync from each other. So it creates these kind of moments where they all shift in and out of alignment. And I wanted the piece to play with the kind of hypnotic state that that can put us in. Inside Wedge used the same bike chain audio sequence as the clothes horse piece, but with added layers of kind of bassy frequencies through a big sound system. Um, I wanted to create a space that feels like you're entering a sound and changes the way that you feel, giving a sort of physical presence to the sounds. I used binaural beats, which is an audio phenomenon, um, which is a tone created inside the brain when it's presented with two slightly different frequencies. Um, which then affects the way the brain functions. Um, and I found it really interesting, the idea of having a kind of two different signals on the right and left, which are both really similar, but they form a new thing in the middle, um, along with the kind of rhythmic relationship from the clicking, that there's this sort of duality throughout it. Um, and I explored this a little bit visually as well with the mirrors, um, in the center where the two walls meet creating this kind of infinity effect um, Which was to kind of visualize what's going on with the um, with the sound Uh, Callum, could you tell me about how this idea came about? Was it, where did this come from in terms of progression from previous pieces and how are you thinking about the, the site itself in relation to this idea? Yeah, I mean, so, so the development from the, the piece of the clothes horse, which was that yeah. playing around with the, the, the relationship between two sounds. So um, I suppose the, the thing that I was keeping on was this kind of thing of two signals creating a kind of central one. But the, um, I suppose, yeah, the idea changed loads when thinking about making it. It then, I feel like I strayed away from the actual bit, which the work was about the whole sound relationship because there yeah. was so much thinking about the construction and sort of creating this space. So they go, so there's a lot of sort of logistics of making it work for this site, I suppose. But, um, because you did make a space. I mean, it's like you've made your own sort of, isolated location within the wider festival but there's also that strange kind of 
relationship to the rest of the site with the mirrors on the outside. So you're having something that almost kind of melds into the environment, but that also allows people to come inside in this kind of completely different little world. Uh, what, what do you think what was the motivation for both creating something that felt like its own individual space within the festival, but also the mirror on the outside, like having it reflect the surroundings in some way? Yeah, I mean, the thing with the, the space, I mean, partly of the, because I wanted it to be really focused on that sound and the yeah. light, like a kind of stripped back. So I suppose that, yeah, just, I wanted to be very stripped back and explore how just the simple sound and light can create an effect, just making it work for that context. But I suppose replicating the context in which I made the work, where I was like, I was just in my living room on my own in a dark room playing with these lights and there's something really quite nice and it was intimate that it was this mm. peaceful space and uh, thought that could be interesting contrasting within a festival um, All the stuff's kind of, going on around it. <laughs> yeah and kind of entering into this weird bubble of a space and how a festival is kind of doing a lot of things with sound and lights and it's all about this sort of relationship with that so I wanted to sort of explore it on a very minimal almost sort of devoid of music but still try and get that attention thing um but the mirrors i mean that was the kind of development with the idea i think originally was thinking of having the the same sequence as the screens on the inside but on the outside so you get you you experience it visually first and then that kind of leads you to it but um the logistics of that were kind of different and i think yeah i can't remember how we got to the mirrors in the end but that worked quite nicely to give it this sort of non non-presence and in line with the sort of distorting your perception I suppose mm. um, yeah 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 it really felt like a kind of yeah. I, I remember the the kind of the slight warping in the outside as you'd walk past it you'd see the whole sort of festival ground rippling in this strange way as you moved around the uh, uh, the object it, mm. yeah it felt like a little kind of strange distorted space on its own it's uh, yeah. It's, I wasn't expecting it to be quite so like mirrory. I don't know if that's the right word, but as we peel the <laughs> stuff away, it was so reflective. Yeah. Like I, we put the, I remember putting the, um, the fence around it because I was worried that people would walk into it once the light was gone. It was just this weird, yeah. we get loads of people going into this really pointy shape. But, Especially uh, because, yeah, there are so many like lights everywhere at night. Everything's kind of reflecting and there's little points of light everywhere. And, and having an object like that that is just, it could so easily be sort of melted into the environment with someone walking along. Uh, <laughs> well, no injuries, so it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In that kind of environment, yeah, I remember having to think a lot about burying cables and making sure, yeah, things were. Yeah. <laughs> Is that possible. something you've had to do for previous? I know you've done lots of stuff outside before, but has there been that much kind of making it safe for people to go around, if you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of the things that I've done outside um, have been super quick, like um, like some of these kind of smoke performance things or just putting all these kind of lights out in the, in the landscape and mapping out landscapes in some ways. Um, they exist, some of them for like a few minutes and some of them are up for like an hour or so or like, uh, sort of take pictures and we do documentation and things um and so th those are all a bit more kind of, kind of spontaneous and often choosing locations deliberately where there's hardly anyone around and um so translating translating the sort of previous installation works and these landscape type pieces into something for a festival that there is going to be you know thousands of people around constantly and, and how are they going to kind of respond to things it, yeah, it's different, but really kind of interesting. And um, and yeah, of course, you have to sort of really carefully think about, you know, the sort of safety side of it, but also just the, the, the different ways that people respond to the work in that kind of environment, other than a sort of typical gallery space. Um, you get something completely different out of it and really kind of interesting and fun. So. Yeah, no, that, I completely agree with the experience and differently. It's kind of one, mm. a big thing which appeals, I suppose. Um, it's, 
yeah, it's a different frame of mind, different content. It's kind of more it feels like people are are in a festival to experience things rather than to understand stuff. It's, it's yes, there's less pressure to kind of do you know what I mean? And it's just more open to kind of like I remember the the heat wasn't it wasn't actual heat, but the the, the sense of warmth from the lights of your trees and sort of returning to them to warm up a few times. It was just this kind of nice that you can dip in and out of when you're sort of feeling it rather than like, I'm in a gallery, I'm going to go. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think the way that people kind of engage with the site as a whole is it's, you're not thinking as you would do in a gallery. People aren't sort of walking in, turning left, reading the sort of wall panel and sort of walk around these things. It's so much more spontaneous and all kind of organic and exploratory the way that they engage with the location and um and I, I suppose because people there's a group of people who are based there for a, a, a longer period of time and people are there for four or five days and so you, you sort of have a relationship with the, the whole place over time that grows a little bit and you know um certainly I mean, one of the things in terms of, of working on it and working there um one of the things i like about festivals is that you, you have a completely different changed understanding of of the weather it's all being outside constantly for five days i mean um you know you you see things constantly changing and um and how yeah the weather is affecting everything it's um yeah i feel like it's, it's a lot of kind of it's lots of subtleties i suppose to being in a festival that don't realize mm -hmm. it makes it so different to normal life like the, the kind of outside like i I feel like I forget I'm outside sometimes in the festival because I'm distracted by all the stuff going on and it's like, oh, I'm actually, yeah. I'm, I'm in a field and it's nature and, <laughs> you know, there's that side of it too, which is, yeah. I, yeah. Maybe it's just the amount of people and the amount of kind of stuff happening. Uh, yeah, you, you do lose a sense of being outside. It's almost like a, yeah, it's a little city suddenly appears and then goes away. Yeah, it's, it's got that mix of the countryside, but the, uh, the busyness of stuff going on and, and everyone's there for that kind of same mutual excitement. Yeah. And, um, and the kind of like we were saying before about being able to revisit a piece, everyone's kind of moving around and you could come back to the same spot the name, same, a, a different day and it's a mm. completely different experience and you're able to sort of, I don't know, go back to it. I mean, did you find that your, with your relationship with the piece, that you were kind of able to experience it? Like you're saying with other works, if that's quite temporary and you kind of set it up, take pictures and it's done did you find yeah. that you could sort of then actually it was still there so you could go back to it or yeah yeah and um and it was nice to sort of see it from a long ways away across the festival ground and sort of uh, you know exploring the the place yourself and sort of looking at the other works and just sort of um being there and catching sight of different things over away in the distance and uh, and just watching people engage with it I think um, yeah it was all really nice mm -hmm. that's just reminded me of something actually as well I mean the way we're talking about the, the site you see the the way in which the site is kind of surrounded by these hills that you're in this sort of valley I think is really interesting um, like you, you're just seeing sort of empty landscape all the way around and then just for this period of time there's this yeah, little hive of activity in the centre. Um, it's something I really like and something uh, fairly unique to the to the site. Yeah, it's a kind of perfect site for a festival. Really, like the grounds are shaped in the right way, but having that backdrop. Yeah, well, it'd be nuts to see the view. I remember my plan, me and Chris, was that we'd finish the build by kind of Tuesday or something, and then go up to the top of Tabletop Mountain and have a look. And uh, now we. A lot more time and energy than I thought. <laughs> it's a bit ambitious to walk up a big hill. Yeah. <laughs> so how how does the Green Man piece you made relate to your kind of wider practice and the sort of links? Well, it's it's one of these things that started out. There was a kind of early iteration of this sort of idea years ago of a really simple version using like plastic drinking straws and ultraviolet light to produce these sort of angular tree sort of shapes. Um, and it's the same colours, this sort of later version, um, the sort of pink, orange, green and um, uh, yellow 
that these neon drinking straws were. Um, and so it was a really, um, it came out of that. And that piece was, again, sort of derived from drawings. I mean, they, they have a sort of hand drawn or sort of childlike sort of feel to them. Uh, I wanted to get a sense of kind of mark making or, um, almost this kind of sort of dream-like environment, like a kind of drawing that had been dragged into 3D space in, in some way. Uh, and so, yeah, that, that's where the piece sort of came from. And I, I think, you know, this kind of work, uh, it definitely impacted sort of later kind of landscape pieces and the way that I was thinking about working in uh, you know working responsively to environments um this idea of, of creating something that was um that created a that changed the space around itself in some way that um both kind of revealed um the surrounding environment through the light that it was putting out um and but also permitted kind of um exploration of that space i think that's increasingly become a sort of a bigger thing in my work um, and wanting to wanting to have something that uh, offers not kind of direct interaction but that sort of presents an opportunity for people to walk around and through and explore the thing um, you know I, I like the idea of, of, of the work having that kind of side to it and being somewhere that people want to congregate um, and creating you know the idea of um, creating a space for um, sort of shared encounters. Uh, and that's, um, that's been a sort of, uh, you know, increasingly uh, important side of my work, I think. Nice. Did you, have you found that other stuff has come from quite low by, are you saying about the straws? I yeah. Like that, it's always nice to hear. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everything sort of, I, I think, starts out as sort of, fairly kind of rough experimentation in the studio with with ideas i mean uh, i had a show last year of these um the, the show included these little series of kind of sculpture maquettes made out of clay and just kind of junk really that i had lying around the studio and just trying to imagine these um sort of concepts for much larger sculptural pieces um, so that's something I quite enjoy. I mean, like with this piece, um, trying out a kind of smaller scale or low tech sort of version, um, and then hopefully sort of, yeah, building it up into a kind of fully realized, uh, thing. Yeah. Do you... Is that a similar way? Oh, sorry. Go no, sorry. Are you okay? <laughs> uh, is, do you work in a similar way? Do you, in terms of kind of experimenting in the studio and developing ideas? I mean, how does that kind of work for you and how do ideas progress from some early experiments? Yeah, I mean, yeah, so I definitely experiment kind of lo-fi, kind of what's just the hand kind of stuff I find. But um, I suppose it's weird that the process of developing it to be a bigger and more refined thing isn't something which, it's not something I, I've had to do much. I suppose Green Man is maybe one of the few times that I've, done that really thinking about it and I think that's what made it feel a bit alien and kind of threw me because I wasn't in that bubble of sort of playing with stuff it was all kind of planning to then have these things um but thinking about other work um, I mean it's weird because it's almost like the stuff I was making around the time of Green Man stuff I was thinking about kind of researching sound and kind of about quite I don't know researching something whereas now more recent years my work's been far more as a sort of means of therapy and a kind of for myself and not thinking about refining or kind of putting anything anywhere so it's 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 really stayed in that experimenting kind of just stuff I kind of find and trying to mm -hmm. yeah I suppose I'm trying to just hold on to that that bubble I mean do you because I don't have much experience of working outside of that bubble do you do you have a preference to where, if you know what I mean, do you prefer that small scale experimenting or decide when it's kind of realized and kind of, or does that become a bit detached? And then it's a sort of weird tangent. 
Yes, I mean, it, it's great in some ways to have a sort of, to, to have the opportunity to kind of realize a finished idea and, you know, and seeing something for the first time is amazing. But there is that, naturally, that period of where it's, you have to think a little bit more pragmatically and it's, it's just about the mechanics of actually delivering something and how is this thing gonna, gonna work? Which, you know, when things increase in, in scale and complexity is always gonna be a factor of it. So, yeah, I mean, they're two very different things. Um, and I, I think both are sort of important. I mean, that kind of experimental sort of phase of things um, with, with the kind of work I've, the landscape-based work that I've done, um, I was talking about before, um, there were some of these sort of pieces that were very sort of carefully planned out and, okay, we're gonna go out to this particular place and do this thing and shoot it from this angle. And it was all really sort of um, considered in that way. Um, but for me, like after the fact, the, the ones from that kind of series, from that project that were the most successful were just being in this sort of environment and being kind of adaptive in the way you were thinking and responsive to what was going on in, on the site. Um, and, I, I think that's that's when the sort of interesting ideas happen. I, I think in many ways that's the, the sort of benefit of uh, the Green Man residency where you're going the year before and you have that time in this space to really think about what's gonna what's gonna work here, you know, you know, yeah. not visually of seeing pictures of the space, but actually being there and sort of having a sense of, of what the place is actually like. So I mean I think it's um, yeah, it's a really important part of it. Yeah, definitely. I suppose especially with a site like Green Man as well, when it's the kind of, I don't know, the power of seeing big mountains and stuff has quite a, quite a feel yeah. to it, which, yeah, you need to sort of see, I suppose. Hmm. So what what's, uh, are you working on currently? I know you've just produced this video piece. Yeah, so I mean, currently my work's been really trying to, um, I don't know, I guess use it as a tool kind of in line with sort of, CBT therapy and kind of mm. helping out my mental health really. Um, so trying to hold on to that, like I was saying before, that experimenting bubble. Yeah. But I don't know, use it, try and, I don't know, trying to use it as an aid, I suppose, yeah, to self reflect. Maybe hang on, I'll find some pictures that make, you, make more sense. <laughs> These are some drawing work. Uh, I've just been playing around with scanning in mind maps and taking away the words. So it's just the kind of revealing the mechanics behind that and just the kind of way that I document my thoughts, whether this can kind of, and I'm more seeing it, whether it can reveal something to me to help me sort of manage my thoughts and ways of thinking rather than uh, make something from it. Uh, so I'm trying to get past. Um, but also trying to, I suppose, focus on the process um, like a lot, I'm gradually realizing that I take more satisfaction out of the bits in between making work than the actual work. So things like a shelf that I might have put up, or like this is a this is a ramp so I can push my bike up the steps, and kind of little kind of satisfying, I don't know, bits in between. Um, so just trying to find ways to sort of yeah use that and kind of I don't know learn from it I suppose. Um, there's a more more recent piece actually using some glue sticks um, which form part of a kind of like meditation practice where often during zoom calls actually because I, I don't like this context <laughs> um, I would hold a glue stick and just kind of use it like a sort of tactile aid so gradually would collect loads of these um, so then it was just a kind of trying to get a process of using the data from those little meditations to then create some work from it um to just yeah kind of first trying to make something useful from those moments of self-reflection or distraction really um again those kind of in between but i should pick some more relevant ones and i suppose the kind of the thinking with this was i quite like the idea of each glue stick is almost like a a thought or a moment of thought 
and then it's this idea of taking all of those thoughts and rearranging them to kind of make something else or view them from a different perspective to then change it i don't know and i suppose my hope is that doing doing this within an art form might help me to learn to do it outside of art and kind of gain a bit more control over over thoughts and whatnot but yeah so that's kind of how do i stop that's sort of recent stuff but, um, yeah so yeah it's quite like a, yeah sorry you go it, it just seems like the there's a lot of thinking about kind of what you find valuable in terms of kind of art making itself and uh, and where the priorities are for you. I think that's really interesting. I mean, we're talking about the sort of the, the sort of simple acts of manipulating materials and just the the experimental side of that. And the you know, I, I think it's really interesting how yeah your thinking is revealed through those simple manipulations of, of the materials. Do you see those as kind of static things in some way, like the, the glue pieces? Because they were photographed in a very sort of dynamic way. Do you, do you think about them as sort of static sculptural works or is this something that's almost a, in constant sort of change? Are they more dynamic? Well, sure, I suppose, I suppose, yeah, in constant change, I think. Um, mm. Yeah, I know you mean that the photos do kind of make it look like it's yeah, I yeah. Don't know. I've almost, I've almost really tried sure. not to think about it too much, but yeah, definitely a changing thing. As in a kind of at that moment, I was looking at it like this, and another yeah. moment, I was looking at it like that, and just that sort of. And I suppose it's constantly trying to document the process because that's mm. the bit that resonates with me. So it's trying to rather than thinking about, and again back to Greenman, I think that's what partly kind of made things a bit strong and the fact that it was new and kind of big and stuff but it was a completely different way of looking at the project and it was like i'm making this thing so i need this and this whereas normally it's i'll go for a walk and find something on the floor and then it's ooh, ooh, what can this do and then yeah so. did you uh, at the time when you were there um on the site and the sh uh, the piece was finished did you have conversations with people and, and talk to them about how they responded to the work? Because I mean, that seems like such a central thing to the piece is all about creating this um, changed sort of mental state when you're inside that space. Yeah, I did have a few, I had a few conversations. A lot of people were kind of um, imagining it was a thing. A few people heard it was like the rocket ship or something, which was like, that's kind of yeah. fun. One person when I was sat in there kind of turned and said like, oh, don't worry, mate, you'll get used to that after 10 minutes or so. And I just got chuckles. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was interesting to kind of, how it became quite a, um, a spot for people to return to and a sort of almost like chill out area. And it would kind of yeah. get, have people sat in the corner and which is kind of how I imagined it to be. You sort of go and just sort of do your, use your head a little bit. But no, I mean, I didn't, I didn't talk as much as I'd like to because I think I was kind of, I was so exhausted by the time it was done. I, I think I maybe did, and maybe I don't remember. <laughs> not sure, I mean, did you manage to talk to people much about their kind of relationship with work and stuff? And yeah, here and there. Um, you know, it's, uh, I can't remember any specific sort of sound bites off the top of my head, <laughs> but it, yeah, it's just nice to sort of, be in in there and sort of see how people were, were using it and you know some people were in there sort of dancing around a little bit and sort of um there's some people who sat down sort of playing music to each other in there and you know, it's just the, uh, nice that people sort of as you say sort of congregating in, in that space yeah it becomes i suppose it becomes a space rather than the thing that's in the space yeah so going through the through the whole which is quite nice yeah i suppose is missing i suppose with the whole gallery context that you know that that contrast that it's unless i suppose the gallery is a space i don't know it's different though isn't it <laughs> yeah it's a kind of microcosm of the sort of festival as a whole really is this thing appearing in the landscape and suddenly people sort of drawn into it in some ways yeah almost like a weird plant a suspicious new plant that's grown up <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> The, 
the mind map pieces are great. Uh, this is such an interesting idea of just stripping out its sort of individual uh, sort of content and just thinking about these things as a trying to reveal a process without any defined functions. It's really, really interesting. I was a sort of accidental piece, I think. Mm. Just popped up. I was like, oh, I wonder what. I think I remember noticing the mind map thing and then trying to forget about it because I didn't want to be consciously knowing that I wanted to document it each time I drew a map. I was like, don't, don't think about it. And then found some old ones and stuff. Which, yeah. Yeah, I suppose you're trying to use use all those frustrating times of trying to sort of either document thoughts or convey ways of thinking and to try and get something fun out of it. <laughs>